Welcome to the Edisto Island Historic Preservation Society's first venture into a virtual tour. I'm Gretchen Smith, the director of the Society and the Edisto Island Museum. And we're doing something a little different this year, and this is our first uh, time doing it, so bear with us. There'll probably be mistakes made, but we'll try to cover them up as best we can. But as most of you know, as members of the Society, we've been having um, the Edisto and Beyond tour every October for almost 40 years and we've only had to cancel it one time and that was a few years ago because we had to evacuate for a hurricane and this year we have canceled it because of the COVID pandemic it's just too dangerous to do that so <clears throat> what we're doing is a series of uh, tours in individual homes one at a time and there'll be a series of them and we're starting out today our first one is at Sunnyside Plantation and we're here with Carol Belser who, who owns the property and has been gracious enough to let us come and talk about the history of the place and then also do a tour through the house and the property. So, um, Carol, do you want to tell us a little bit about the history of the plantation before we go inside and see the, in, the interior? Okay, I'd love to. And welcome to Sunnyside. I'm pleased to have you all here. Um, this is at least the third time, I guess, since I have had the house, which I got in the early uh, 2000s, um, that we've had a tour here. And it's always been so much fun, and I'm glad you're here. The house was my great-grandfather's house. He built it. We don't know the exact date. It was sometime between 1870 and 1880 that the house was completed. Uh, but uh, it is a family home. It's uh, my grandmother got it after my great-grandfather had it. Then she passed it down to my father, and he passed it down to me. So it's been in the same family. It's been the in the same beginning. family since it started. Which yeah. is a bit unusual for Edisto. There right. are several houses that have been in one family, but yes. a lot of them have changed hands over the years. Yes, yeah, yeah. So we're, we're very fortunate that we have, to have it in the same family. I'll talk about its relationship to Peters oh, Point Road uh, all right, extends I, I, I can do that. all the way down. The um, Sunnyside uh, was given to my great-grandfather, Townsend Michael, when he got married. He and Sarah Webb Clark uh, got the house after the Civil War, and they started to build the house at that time. It took them quite a while. They uh, lived over above the gin house at one time. They lived over in what we now call Shady Side at one time, while they were in the process of building this house. But uh, Townsend was the son of Isaac Jenkins Michael, and Isaac Jenkins Michael had the Point House at the end of Peters Point Road. Uh, Isaac Jenkins Michael apparently was a very wealthy uh, plantation owner, uh, if we can use that term in these times. Uh, but. Uh, Isaac Jenkins Michael, my father told me he had tons of plantations. Now, I think plantations is a little bit of a misnomer. People think of a plantation house as a plantation. I think what the plantations actually were, were working units in a big series, uh, in, a, in, a, in a big, what's the word I'm hey. like? Acreage would do. Acreage will do. Uh, in in acreage, uh, that uh, they had s slaves at the time working on these sections of plantations. Sunnyside is made up of two plantations: Sunnyside itself, and then California, which is just down the road. But Townsend, Mike. I mean Isaac Jenkins, Michael, my great great grandfather, had the point house at the end of the road. But he also had Crawford Plantation. He also had Blue House, Bailey Island. So, I mean, he had many, many properties. And Carol, wasn't that typical of a lot of the plantation owners? They lived in one place and had other plantation properties that they simply farmed. Yes. I, I and think did that, not live there. I guess that's what I'm trying to say yeah. is, is the unit was just a farming unit. And they had slaves who stayed on that unit. So they didn't have to transport the slaves from one place to the other during the day. That would just be a waste of time. It's my understanding there was in the northeast corner, 
of this property before the house was built, there was a slave uh, settlement. That's Which what, is what you're saying. Would yes, have been typical. Yeah, yes, yeah. Right across the road, there was a slave settlement. And then over at uh, some of my cousin's house, there was a slave settlement over there. So we do can look at the old maps and you can see all these little houses and that's where you assume the slave settlements were. So this property, what was originally Peter's Point Plantation, of which this is a subset, yes. went all the way from the border at the end down to where the Serpentarium is, which is what most of y'all know where that is. So yes. It was yeah. a huge piece of property. Yes, yeah, yeah, it was. And cotton was what was grown. Mm -hmm. Exactly, they grew sea island cotton. That was their staple crop. It's my understanding that they grew some rice, but it was just rice to be used for the um, people on the place. Okay, not it, for sale. Not for sale, no. no. So. And that, I think, my understanding also is that rice was not grown here very much because of the salinity of the, the water. water. Yeah. Too saline. Mm -hmm. But we had some, um, on the back of the property, there are some old uh, irrigation ditches, which were fresh water. And that's probably where they grew the rice, in those freshwater areas back there. So, um, do you want to talk a little bit about some of the outbuildings that I are on the that. property? I would love to. There's some really nice outbuildings here. Uh, my barn, which is over this direction, is older than the house. All the outbuildings are older than the house. Uh, as I said, the house wasn't built until after the Civil War. The barn is a it's, it's the, one of the most incredible buildings you've ever seen. You can see where they have pegged it and to make a long piece of wood, they have put two huge pieces of wood and, and spliced them together. It's, it's just wonderful. There's also a ladder that you can climb up. It's just made out of a post where they cut steps in it and you could climb up to the top of the um, barn. And I we used, will go into the We will the go into the barn. Yes. Yeah. And uh, as a child, I could climb that ladder. Not now. So, um, and I would like to add, some of you, our members may know, because they've been to parties there, that it's a great party barn. Yes, it is a good party barn. I think my father wanted to keep us close to home, not let us go down to the pavilion. So he, he provided a pavilion for us. And, uh, and I, I would like to say one thing about Carol and her family, and it's true of a lot of the people who own, own the old plantations, there's a certain responsibility that a lot of the homeowners feel to own a piece of history, that they're very fortunate to own a piece of history. And you in particular are such a good steward of this property and its Thanks. history, and also share it so willingly, uh, letting us have it on tour, letting people use the barn for, for different functions. And it's just really a generosity that you, is I think a rare thing. Well, thank you. I say this house owns me. I do not own it. Um, it definitely owns me. Definitely owns your pocketbook. It does own my pocketbook. Now, another place that's really beautiful here on my property is the cotton gin over there. And all it is, is an old tabby foundation at this point. It was a two-story cotton gin. Uh, at one point, they had moved all the uh, mechanics over to the barn, and Daddy wanted that place in the barn to put something else in. So he got three fat flatbed trucks that took all of the cotton gin equipment to a museum in the upstate. And uh, they have since rebuilt one cotton gin out of those three cotton gins, and it is now owned by the uh, Agricultural Society, and they take it around and show people what the original cotton gin looked like. But the Tabby Foundation, Tabby is a old way of making concrete. They made oyster, sh they dug oyst oyster shells, they crushed them up, and the lime would come out in the oyster shells, they'd burn it, and somehow that would cause it to adhere and to uh, make a matrix so that they could make a a concrete structure out of the Tabby Foundation. And uh, I have people coming up to me and ask me what that fort is. Well, it's not a fort. It's just the remains of the old Tabby gin house uh, at the time. And by the way, this is Gumbo. He's, he's my best friend and- uh, Don't tell Sid that. I won't tell Sid that, no. <laughs> but uh, he's, he's a good boy. Uh, the other uh, places 
uh, little homes or little uh, structures on the building, which we will see eventually. One of them was a kitchen. And that, of course, is one of the main things you have to have in uh, revamping these old homes, is you've got to have a functioning kitchen. Of course, we all know that the in the old days, they used to put the kitchens outside because they burned up so often. They didn't want the big house to burn up so they could afford to have one of the little structures out back burn up. And that was the original kitchen. My grandmother took part of the porch right behind me and she made it into the second kitchen in the house, right here. which is right behind me, right through that glass door. And then my uh, mother decided she wanted a two-butt kitchen instead of the one-butt kitchen that she had back over here. Um, and so she put another addition onto the house, which was a big kitchen. And uh, that's the one we use present. Let me ask you a question, mm -hmm. uh, because a lot of people are find it interesting that, that you can live in an old home, a 200-year-old home or whatever, and have modern amenities. Do you have to go, because you're on the National Register, do you have to go through certain hoops to to make changes to the house? No, at least down here at Edisto, we do not. Okay, We're not, I know they do in Charleston. We are not in Charleston, so we don't yeah. have to go to the uh, BAR. Yeah. So we do not down here, at least we have not. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't say anything more than that. Okay. Um, but, uh, but do you find it hard to maintain the integrity of the history of the house and modernizing it at the same time is that a clash or did y'all done a great job of making it work not really um you can you can do it if you want to do it um, my contractor who i've used several times since i've been down here he understands what i want you know i'll have to say billy i want to do this and billy will know exactly what i want to do he he he, he it's his it's, it's in him too to keep the integrity of he the whole house. Of the history. He does. He did the barn over for me because when we said I first moved into the house uh, uh, in the early 2000s, the barn really needed some help. We walked up there and my aunt said, "Oh, I just burned the damn thing down." <laughs> well, said I just were appalled, and we said, "No, we can't do that," and uh, so. What and we're I, glad you did. Yes, yes, we are very glad. And what I did is I said, Billy, I want to redo the barn. I want to keep everything that's old that we can keep, but I want it to be safe. Hmm. So make it safe because I know as a child, my father kept saying, don't go up into the attic. Don't go up into the attic. You'll fall through. And you certainly would have back then. Um, but we made it structurally sound and we were able to keep a lot of the old stuff and we sister boards over some of the old things so that it would be structurally sound um, we've had to redo uh, the little kitchen and the other um, little house on the property which is called the commissary it used to be across the, cr uh, the island over on the, uh, back over there. I know you can't see where I'm pointing, but uh, we have had to put new shells on them. The buildings are structurally the same, but the outside is all new. And uh, just to make them usable and uh, make them functioning. So that's what we've done. Um, you will see inside one of the amenities that we have um, put on the inside is air conditioning, which, you know, is sort of a necessity nowadays, particularly after the summer that we just went through. Um, when we cut the boards or cut the floor to put the air conditioning in, I said, do not cut my parquet floor, whatever you do. Which is original to the house. Which right. is original to the house, yes. Uh, the floorboards were an inch and a quarter thick. I, everybody who is a carpenter has looked at them and said, oh God, I can't imagine working with that wood. But the 
more, or the evening we walked in after they had cut the floor, it smelled wonderful. It smelled great. So let's talk about three other things and then we can go inside. Okay. Uh, one is this pie safe. I believe that's what it is. Yeah, pie safe. Yeah, which looks a little bit like uh, the, the Gothic. Well, yeah, it looks like this house. It's and I think cool. one thing we haven't talked about is that this house is very similar to Bleak Hall. What Bleak Hall looked like because over on Botany Bay, the the her great great grandfather, whatever it was, it who was, built the house, was born at Bleak Hall. Yeah, my great grandfather was born at Bleak Hall. So that's why this his, looks his, like His that. grandmother was Hepzibah Townsend, and. Uh, and that's why he is, uh, they went over to, uh, to Bleak Hall and to Botany Bay quite a bit. They, they used it a lot, and so they spent a lot of time over there. But that was family. So, Is this original to the house? The that pie is, safe? the pie safe is original to the house. I can remember at one point on the back porch here, my grandmother, she'd cut watermelons over there. And, uh, and that's probably one of the best memories of my grandmother I have, is we'd sit over there and we'd cut watermelons. My mother, of course, took the pie safe into the house and put a television in it. <laughs> you know, Talk got about modernizing. Mo yeah, modernizing. <laughs> well, the, you know, TVs never worked down here very well. We always had tinfoil <laughs> on the antennas. This is back when we had antennas. Uh, but uh, when I got married, Sid said, Gail? that TV's not gonna work in that Faraday cage. You've got too much tin or, or metal. metal on the outside of the uh, pie safe for it to work. So um, I, I brought the pie safe back out onto the porch like grandmama Where had it. Where it fits. Yes. The other thing on this porch is the joggling board. And I, I think, it, I've always heard that it was built when the house was built. It's one of the biggest joggling boards that I've ever seen. Hey, hey it's, move that thing. Well, it comes apart. And oh, it can, does, yeah. Yeah, it comes apart, and you can do that a lot easier than it looks. Um, but it's, it's my father always, that was his uh, surgery. People would come up and say, Doc, I got a splinter, or I cut my finger, or, you know, they'd come and see him, he'd say, Come here on the joggling board. He would do the surgery on the joggling board. He did the board. surgery on the joggling board, Whoa. and then he'd pull out <laughs> his uh, little pocket knife. Oh god! <laughs> he, he would put uh, alcohol on it, but you know he'd get the the the, um, the splinter out of the finger or whatever. But that's that was his surgical. Uh, and you knew to sit still. Yes. Oh yes. Oh yeah. <laughs> Uh, the other thing I think we need to talk about is the cannon yes. that is at the front of the house. You know, it's, it's kind of intimidating when you drive up sometimes and you see this cannon pointing down the road at you. Well, the cannon was found in the South Edisto River when they were digging up the oyster shells to build the cotton gin. And the cannon, one of the arms on the cannon is broken. And so it wasn't any, it was just weight in the boat. And so they just threw it over. And my grandfather, my great grandfather used to use it to get up on his horses. That was his stepping stone. Uh, and uh, that's what he would do with that. My and I have a personal history with that can. Yes, you do. <laughs> we, we had a group of kids called the History Detectives that we used to meet with every week. And we were out here digging. And I was taking the kids home and backed up and backed into that cannon. And the sound, one of the kids said, ooh, that didn't sound good. <laughs> and $5,000 later, I had repaired the The car. insurance company wanted to know if she had oh. damaged, the damaged the cannon. <laughs> no, they asked me when I reported it to the insurance company. She said, where were you, at, were you at a putt-putt range? I said, no, it's a real cannon. <laughs> <laughs> and she did no damage to it. But that cannon, when we were children, it produced the best Easter eggs there was always an Easter egg in that cannon on Easter day. You could always go by and there'd be another one in there. So it was great. Useful. It was useful. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Shall we go inside? Gretchen, come inside. Okay. Let's see what's in here. These floors are beautiful. Well, these are the parquet floors and it's my understanding. I heard somewhere along the line that my great grandfather wanted to show his wealth. And so this is where he showed his wealth. 
in the parquet floor because they're quite expensive to build. So you make a good first impression. Impression, exactly. And it's confined just to the it's entrance hall. It's just to hall. the entrance hall, exactly. They're beautiful. So these are original exactly. to the house. Yes. The house cost $800 to build, believe it or not. But during the Civil War, or right after the Civil War, that, that was, a lot was of money. dear. That yeah. was dear, yes. Well, we were talking about the wood just a minute ago and how thick the floors are when we put my air conditioning vents in. These are some pieces of the wood that were taken off out of the floor so they could put in the air conditioning vents. As I said, it's an inch and a quarter thick and you can actually count how old this heart pine is because um, it, it shows the growth rings in here. So it's really very interesting. Um, and my father, he was living in Bishop Gadsden at the time. He said he wanted to take a piece home with him to Bishop Gadsden. So he grabbed, he actually stole a piece from me. But I found it when I, I was cleaning up his room. But anyway, that's what the, uh, the floors are. Let me ask like. you this, Carol. Mm -hmm. are, the, are the floors upstairs as thick? Cause I, I am assuming they are. I, I don't can't know. remember what house it was we were in on tour, but they had different types of flooring on the first floor versus the second floor, the most expensive flooring would have been, been on, on the, the first, first floor, floor, and then it got thinner this way and that way up on the upper floors where it was just family going. I'm not sure about that, Gretchen. When we go upstairs, we can look. Okay. So, um, the mantelpiece here has quite a story. This is the original mantelpiece to the house. Beautiful. Uh, it was taken out by my mother and she put in some metal pieces she had found in Charleston on the side of the street. My mother was a famous uh, scavenger. scavenger along the streets and she had two really pretty metal pieces, or three actually, and she put one here. This one, my sister took, put in her house in Charleston and when I was redoing this room, she said, do you want the metal piece back? And I said, certainly. So she had to take it back out of her house and we had to put the mantelpiece from here into that house and this one came home. So, uh, but we redid this mantelpiece, redid the, um, the wood, I mean the uh, bricks. They, it, it's called a soldier somehow because of this middle brick. The bricks kind of go out as soldiers from there on. Do you they, get, they fan out. Yeah, they much. fan out. And, uh, but who, who, the guy who did this really did a fantastic job on, on, the, on the bricks. And, uh, you know, it, it bricks all the way up, so. How high are these ceilings? They're very tall. Oh, I've never measured them, but I think they're 13 or 14 feet. Oh, at least. Okay. At least. And you said this is the women's parlor? This is what I've, I've been told, that it's the women's, or the ladies' parlor. Ladies. I guess we say ladies. Yeah. Um, because this is where the medicine cabinet is. And inside of here, we have old recipes. Uh, and I have just put pieces of trinkets that we have found that were uh, in the house. Uh, they had an old Edison record player where they're circular records. Um, this, blue, I love yeah, this is an eye wash. So if you need to wash your eye out, that's what this is. Over here is a a screw to put your a hole in your belt. So if you needed to put a hole in the belt, this is what you would use. Um, we even found an old bit for uh, a mule or something. But there, that's just where we had put everything. Right here is a instrument for darning socks. They darning egg, I think it's called. Is that what it's called? Uh -huh. Okay. We should put that on our... Um, we did. We had it on our... Oh, didn't we have it on that? We did. Okay. Up here are rings that go with the uh, cast nets, the shrimp cast nets. Then they're just old bottles that we found. I do not know what... Oops, don't know what this is. I think it's probably something for uh, making biscuits, maybe. Let's see what... Or it may be from, from the record player, because it looks like about the same size. It could be. And I don't know what this is. I don't know what it is. It's all uh, rusted together. But, you know, just there is an old fork. So, and those of you who saw, who got the uh, challenges, the weekly challenges, would have seen 
these they're cattle horns, aren't they? Yes. Yeah, yeah. cattle horns horn and the horn. eyewash. You've seen that as yeah. well. Yeah. Um, we had those and the darning egg were yeah. all in our challenges. To identify so here they are in their home, home place okay and then we have as i said recipes uh fever mixture uh horse no for colds for rheumatism <laughs> um i have a hard time reading all this so handwriting is very very difficult horse water i don't know maybe if they had problems with horses somehow but they have the recipe still written in here so and when uh, I had this room repainted, I told the painters, I said, "Y'all, if y'all paint the inside of this, I'm gonna have to kill your boss. <laughs> so they, and they, they believed you. Yeah, they believed me and so there's no painting there. So. so that's one of the things you have to take care of when you're updating Updated. some places. You yes. don't get rid of that by mistake. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about all the bird paintings that we see really throughout the, house? the house? My husband is an ornithologist. That's a big word for a bird watcher. Uh, <laughs> he's, he's more, he's he, more than a bird well, watcher. Well, he is. He studies bird migration and uh, was on the faculty at Clemson for 37 years and taught ornithology and animal behavior. Animal behavior was his meat and potatoes course. It was uh, uh, one of the large courses that people in biological sciences had to take. And Carol, you also are I, steeped I, in bird, I am. The I bird was culture his, as well. I was his essential assistant, is like is what I like to refer and to. And still are. And still are. Uh, the painting above the door is not his, but all the rest of these paintings are pictures that are paintings that Sid did of birds. Uh, these two statues, by the way, are part of the Clark furniture. Uh, we discussed it earlier. It's Neptune and Minerva. Minerva. And uh, so, uh, actually, this painting, the one, the Laughing Gold painting, was one that was in an auction. And nobody bought it. And so Sid said, well, I'm not going to leave it with, Bring that, it home. with that group. I'm going to buy it. So we did that. That one's so different from his other ones. Oh, well, the other one's a watercolor. Yeah. This one is uh, oil. So that's why there's a difference. Uh, beh over behind uh, Neptune. Neptune, thank you. Or when Sid and I got married, we started making Christmas cards, and uh, those are the first six Christmas cards oh. that we made and sent out. And it's basically just a, a, a five by six or four by six piece of uh, paper that uh, we took to the Xerox people and Xerox them and then we hand painted the color of the bird in that uh, painting. So those are the first six. And those of you who are lucky enough to come, Sid and Carol friends get these every year. They, people collect them and frame them. They're just lovely paintings. They are really nice. And uh, that's about it. Okay. We're back in the foyer and I just want to show you a few other things before we go into one of the other rooms. This hat rack over here is a part of the Clark furniture. It is a big piece of furniture. I love it. Uh, growing up, grandmother always used to have the children's toys in this bottom uh, drawer here. And uh, so the kids would always come in and get uh, croquet mallets and that kind of stuff. These little chairs right here are the only Michael furniture that I have. I don't know anything else about them except for Daddy used to tell me those two pieces of furniture are Michael furniture. And also I'd like you to look at this washstand here. All of this has marble top on it, which is wonderful. And, uh, and it, so that would prevent it from getting wet when you're washing your face. Okay. Uh, we were talking about the cotton long staple Sea Island cotton before. These are the stencils that they used to do on the bales of cotton. Now it wasn't actually a bale. They put it into a sheet and they would tie the opposite corners together. And so it was more like a, a handkerchief type thing. And those were what they were, the bales of cotton were. This uh, stencil is sort of a serendipitous one. My aunt and uncle, gave this one to my grandparents on their 50th anniversary. They got married here at Sunnyside 
and they went to New York on their honeymoon. As I say, that's sort of just a serendipitous one that turned out to, to be kind of quaint, and uh, we like it. Then over here, this is the actual deed to the property. Um, and Mother had it framed so that you can see both sides of the deed. Uh, this right up here, this medallion, is a medallion that was given to my great-grandmother, uh, great-grandfather, Townsend Michael, for having served in the Civil War. He left the University of Virginia. He was a senior when he, the war started, and he left the University of Virginia and uh, fought the war, and uh, they gave him this medallion just to commemorate that he had been at the university and would probably have graduated in good stead. This is a portrait of Townsend Michael, my great-grandfather, and his name was just Townsend Michael. Apparently, when he was going to be baptized, it was supposed to be John Townsend Michael, but the minister forgot to put in the John, so he just always kept his name as Townsend Michael. No middle name or no first name. We're going to uh, move over here to another portrait in just a second. This is a portrait of Sarah Webb Clark. She was uh, the wife of Townsend Michael and my great-grandmother. This is one of the little community books about uh, Edisto Island. You can get this in the museum shop. This is my great-grandfather, Townsend Michael, his wife, second wife, my uncle Townsend, my grandmother, Susie Lee, Michael Belser, my uncle Edwin Belser, my grandfather, Edwin Belser Sr., then my Aunt Sarah, my Aunt Susie Lee, my daddy is down here, he's Richie, and then there's my cousin Lily Cardwell. She was Legree, she stayed with, lived with my grandparents during her nursing school. But this is our family portrait. All right. We're still in the back of the foyer. I just wanted to point out the runner for these stairs is all one piece of hard pine. It's, I mean, a tremendous piece of wood. And my theory is that the Joplin board piece of wood was made out of the same piece of wood as this. Don't know if that's true or not, but hey, it's a good story. I also want you to take note of the two rooms to the right and left. One of them is we've made into a studio. It used to be Grandmama's kitchen. One of them to the right is the bathroom, the new bathroom. It used to be a teeny bathroom where Grandmama put it in, but we have made it into a washroom with a folding table and a big, big bathroom. It's one of my favorite rooms in the house. Let's go into the uh, men's parlor. Okay, which seems to be a mirror image of the women's, ladies, excuse me, ladies' parlor. It is a mirror image, but this room we converted to our master bedroom. And uh, I do not know, this is my supposition, and I feel like I can say this, but it, it has good, there's good meat to it. I think that the ceiling in this room is so reminiscent of the ceiling or the, um, the, the inside of Trinity Church, which oh, was rebuilt yeah. at about the same time this house was built. I have a feeling the same artisan who did Trinity Church may have done the ceiling in this room. The woodwork does look very it's, it's reminiscent. Yeah, that. I mean, it's all beadboard and, yeah. and, and, and symmetrical and geometrical. And, uh, and now the other room doesn't have that kind of ceiling. No, it doesn't. It has just a plain old ceiling. Yeah. ceiling. yeah. And I will say that uh, Sid and I are not able to renovate every room at the same time. So we're kind of doing it room by room. And uh, the women's parlor, we have redone. And we're getting around to some of the other ones, but uh, this one has not been redone yet. So you're probably doing them the rooms that you use the most yes. come first. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. And the room that is in the worst shape True. gets done first. Yeah. Sometimes 
they jump ahead of the other ones that I really wanted to do. <laughs> well, it makes sense to do it incrementally since you can't yeah. do the whole thing yeah. any exorbitantly. Expensive. Exactly. Now, this is um, over here. This mantelpiece in this room was one of those mantelpieces Mother found on the street in Charleston. <laughs> so, tell us about this odd chair over here. Oh, this is a potty chair. Um, there were three outhouses. One was for the white people only, and that was close to the house. And then there were two outhouses on either end of the island. Uh, I remember one at the behind the barn, and uh, do not remember remember the others. The uh, saying was, they flush twice daily with the tide. So. So that's why they were built closest to the water. Yes. And those other two would have been for the slaves. The, the well, anybody could have used the other two. But the women, basically, I think, were in the whites only okay. toilet. And then the other two were basic for the, for the uh, slaves. And Well, there were no slaves at this house. That's let true. me Let me clarify that. They, they were uh, servants at that you're time. Because you're post-Civil War. We're post-Civil War. But where, where does this come from? Do you know the story behind it? I do not. Um, but they would have a, a, a pot underneath it, and you'd go, and when you finished, you would cover it back up. <laughs> it's a very comfortable chair. Mm. Got interesting history to it. Got an sure. interesting history, yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Carol, where to now? Let's go to the, live, uh, to the dining room. Okay. You lead on. This is the dining room, and, uh... There's not much to say about the dining room, except for it really is the end of the house. There was originally two little bay rooms that went off the, either of these two doors, uh, but when Mother put the addition on those two little bay do windows, or they went away. Uh, this is one of another one of the mantel pieces my, my mother found on the street in Charleston, and uh, so that's what this is right here. Over here, is a big window. The reason for this is my grandmother wanted to be able to look at the creek. She always sat at that end of the table and uh, during a meal she'd like to watch the creek and see what was happening out there. It took five saw blades to cut that window and uh, again it is all heart pine, very very rugged material, almost more mineral than it is uh, vegetable. So, but that's really all I had to say about this room, except for I want to talk about uh, my pocket doors. I want to show you all the pocket doors that we have in this room. They're great. They're really beautiful. My mother had everything in this house stripped of the paint. My grandfather used to walk around with a paintbrush in his hand. It was all army gray. Everything was army gray. Well, my mother had everything stripped, and this is part of what she had stripped back to the natural heart pine wood. But those doors are original to the house? It, these doors are original to the house, wow. yes. Um, yeah, it, from what I understand, my great-grandfather was in this room toward the end of his life. He couldn't go up the stairs, and this was his hospital room was in this room. Nice view. Yeah. Well, he wanted to see the creek, too. Yeah. yeah. All right, Carol, you've talked about the in, uh, impact your grandmother had with this window and the bathrooms and kitchen and things. And then your mother did some things to my mother, modernize the house. My right? mother made that. the two-butt kitchen. Let's go look at the two-butt kitchen. It's a sizable kitchen. Come on. Okay. Gretchen, come on into the kitchen with me. All right, well, remind me, this is where the original house ends. That's right where the original house is. Yes, yes. This is the new. This is the new house Mama built in, or the new addition Mama built in 1987. Uh, the floor is actually uh, wood that she got from somebody who was selling old wood. So I was going to say it looks very wood. similar. You know, yeah. It's not yeah. that different. No, it's not. But Mama wanted a bigger kitchen. She, 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 was, she was a great cook. She was a cook, yeah. She yeah, was she was a good cook, cook. yeah. And uh, so, uh, lots of her recipes in Ponta Pavetta stuff, and try all of them. They're really good. Crab cakes, crab quiche, those are some of my favorite recipes in there. But, uh, so she built this bigger kitchen because, oh, 
their kitchen so that, uh, you know, she would have a place and daddy also would have a place to cook. You could have a crowd in here. You could have a crowd in here. And uh, it was wonderful. But she did some innovative well, things. Well, this is flavor too, to put the hot top. Hot top in there, yeah. Uh, nowadays, you know, we would have a granite kitchen top. I would like to have that too, but as I told you earlier, we are doing one room at a time. Incremental. And uh, this is a big room. We were actually starting to do it right before the COVID hit, and that put it on hold. And, uh, but it's, it's fun. I mean, she has cabinets behind the cabinets, and uh, it, it's just, it is a wonderful kitchen. I've had to replace, you know, the stove and the ovens, but, you know, that's with time. You have to do that kind and of stuff. And salt air. And salt air, yes, yes. Come on into this part of the, uh, the room over here, which is the sitting room. This uh, is, is a nice area. Well, this is the living part of the house, the new living part of the house. It has insulation in it. It stays very warm, and uh, this has air conditioning and heat, like all of us have grown used to. Uh, but uh, uh, it, it's great, and uh, we have this wonderful view of the creek. We feel like we actually live in the creek out here in this yeah. part of the room. Your parents did this room at the same time as the kitchen. Yes, yes. Wonderful. This was all done at the same time. Talk about this. This is interesting. Oh, oh this is this is kind of interesting. It is. Um, Mama had originally, and I didn't know this until after my mother had died and my dad was getting ready to die. He came in one day and he told me this story about Mama had originally put oyster shells in it because she wanted to, it to look like tabby, mm -hmm. but the oyster shells were all too great, and it was just too dark. So they decided to put coquina, yeah. and so this came from Florida. You can see some little sea urchin uh, mm -hmm. arms in there and that kind of stuff. But it was as close as mom could get to tabby and still have the same feeling as tabby. Well, it's a beautiful light color, too. It's so this is my mother's color here. I'm not crazy about it, but uh, <laughs> I, I, I will get rid of it soon, I hope. But uh, I walked into the house when Mama had just redone it, and I said, Mom, it's purple. And she goes, oh, no, it's desert sand. I think that's the name of this color. <laughs> And uh, it still looks purple. A rose by any other name. Yeah, it's still yeah, a rose. It, it, yeah, exactly. But uh, we live in this part of the house, and it, this is the only functioning chimney that we have. Um, but uh, we, we, we love it. So, anyway. Thank you. Let's go upstairs. All right, we're on the second floor of the house. There are two bedrooms on either side of the head of the stairs, another bedroom back in the back, and then one of the things that we've had to do is had to put in a new bathroom up here. We had a funeral and somebody came up here to use the bathroom, and all of a sudden one of the people, caterers, came up and said, we've got water coming down. And so that bathroom jumped to the top of the list of to-dos. Another thing is, is look at how low my banister railings are against code but they're historical so they're staying here let's go up to the cupola <coughs> welcome to the cupola this is the top of the house the third floor or two and a half floors i guess we should call it you used to be able to see all the way to the ocean because everything was cotton fields out here now of course we do have trees and you can't see that far this is also the air conditioning that occurred in the house. All the rooms downstairs have little vents over the doors, but they would uh, open all the windows and the doors up here, and it would pull the hot air out of the house, and uh, that's how they would kind of try to keep it a little bit cool. So we can go out on the uh, roof if you want to. We'll do that. Okay. Uh, what I want to talk about from the cupola is look over at the red roof over here. This is the Woodruff Cottage. It was brought over from Eddingsville Beach. It was a, the Michael Cottage on Eddingsville Beach, but they brought it over here after the Civil War so that he could rent it out and have a doctor live in it, Dr. Woodruff. And uh, apparently he had a little bit of farming going on, but he also took care of the people on the island too. 
and uh, he, uh, we, we, I think this is my assumption, is they wanted to have a doctor on Edisto at all times. So I think they, the doctor moved around to different plantations and they kept him for a couple of months and then he'd move on to the next one. But he was on a plantation on Edisto so that you could get to a doctor. All right. This is my favorite side of the roof. We're up in the trees, the birds are up here. It just is marvelous. I really love this side of the house. Well, Gretchen, it's been fun having you. Thank you so much. I hope everybody's enjoyed this wonderful personal tour of Sunnyside Plantation. It's been a thrill to be here and learn not just about the, the house, but your family history as well and great anecdotes of, of living with history. Thank you. Goodbye.